kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his glory is above earth and heaven. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. We stand to sing our opening hymn, it's number 65. <laughs> The light of your love shines on. Your light has come into the world and neither darkness nor evil nor even death itself could overcome it. And we, like Mary, like the disciples, like doubting Thomas, who have been there with you through Holy Week and the first Easter morning, have become witnesses to the resurrection story, wondering, bewildered, hoping, rejoicing, and sometimes doubting. It's not always easy to believe with our minds and trust with our hearts. Open the eyes of our faith that we recognise your presence. Open our minds and hearts to receive your light. May this time of worship, reflection and celebration be a worthy response to your love. 
In your name we pray. The opening words of the service were from Psalm 148. When is going to read it to us later on. But part of it is about the weather. And I want to tell you a story which involves this lamp and an eight-year-old minister. Shorts, standard anorak, t-shirt with rockets on it, blue as I recall, going with his dad and his granddad, his older brother, camping. We had a two-man tent, so that was plenty of room for us, wasn't it? And we went up to deliver, which is just above my family home. It's where Romans had lead mines, well, nearly just under 2,000 years ago. Quite a spooky sort of place. But we were going to go camping, and I'd never been camping before, and I was very excited. And I didn't mind that, out of courtesy to my granddad, he had the camp bed and the rest of us had to sleep on the floor. That was fine. I had my teddy bear with me, so I was happy. I still had it at eight, sorry. And it was a typical glorious Welsh weather. And it really was a bit windy. And my dad had got one of the, do you remember those old little pump primers? Yeah, you still use yours, Brian, don't you? <laughs> so we've got this little light, I don't know if you can see this, it's actually on, but we got our little light. And I think it was the second crack of thunder that was a bit scary. Now to make this a, 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 an immersive experience, I need you to make a couple of cracks of thunder sound. So could you practice? Um, I'm going to ask my future son-in-law, who is an actor, to show us how. So could you do us, please, uh, Alex, your crack of thunder noise? vocal to it as well, that'd be fantastic. Oh, okay. Um, okay, after three. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Right, I need someone to do rain noise now. That's easy, isn't it? Oh, yes. I mean, it didn't quite make that noise on the tent, but you've got the idea. Simon, are you going to find a, a common drink of water? <laughs> So I need, right, so there we were. We'd got the lamp on, and my dad said, it's time to go to sleep now. So he blew the light out, and then there was this almighty crack of thunder. Oh, I stamped foot as well then, I heard, that's perfect. And then the rain starts to fall. And then another crack of thunder. And I won't do the lightning effect, because that's too tricky. And was I scared? No, no. Because my dad was there, and my granddad was there, and my big brother was there. Had I been up there now with little ones, I would have been absolutely petrified. But it is remarkable that the power of that storm was phenomenal. And there is something in the Psalms that says sometimes the greatness of God is found in unexpected places and unexpected ways. And yet you can still feel safe during it. So, yeah, in some ways we could be under the weather. But it doesn't mean that you're not safe. That God is not there. Praise the Lord from the earth. The psalm goes, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind. 
And if that lamp was a, shot, a sign of God's presence, because I think my dad did put it on after a bit, it's a reminder that we're not alone. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. 530 in the Red Hill books. I was listening to Annette, so Annette will be giving us a lead on that. We'll start from verse 2, but could we have a go at that? Say yes, sure. Yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you. First. fantastic start last night. We had a curling evening and a fish and chip supper and I'm really thrilled to announce that we raised £160 so we've got a great start. Um, you will find um, Christian Aid envelopes on your pews. Please feel free to put a donation in there if you want to. Um, there will be a collection in the um, entrance hall um, afterwards, so if you just pop them in there. But also, I'd like to tell you about Friday, where we're having our Friday friendship as usual, coffee morning, but we are having bacon sandwiches and a book sale as well. So that will run from 10.30 till 12 o'clock on Friday morning, all welcome. And that is in aid of Christian aid. Um, 
Oh, also, we've got £3,000 as well already raised so far for Ukraine. So that's great. We've also got something in the entrance hall as well, another um, sort of dish if you want to pop it into that. So especially meant to mention uh, for Joyce Hall, many of you will know that Joyce Hall passed away last month but there was no funeral which was her wishes. As a bit of a compromise, there will be a short informal event on Thursday this week at 7pm to remember her and her family and neighbours have been invited and anyone from the fellowship of our church um, is very welcome. So please come along and we will have refreshments where we can remember Joyce. So, um, next Sunday is quite a special event. Um, we will have our service as normal, but it also includes the wedding of Lisa and Alex, Sean's daughter. And um, the hope is that everyone will come and join in and enjoy the wedding ceremony with the family. Um, there will be some special um, festivities including some wedding cake in the hall next door, so you're all very much invited to come and have a cup of tea with us and a piece of cake. The service will be led by a very proud dad, the Reverend Sean Coleman, so please come along and enjoy. So this coming week we've got toddlers on Tuesday, an exercise group at 2pm and boxer size at 6 Wednesday it's Musical Tots at 9.30, Brigade at 6.30pm, Thursday's Toddlers again, the Memorial event at 7pm in the evening for Joyce Hall. Friday at 10am we will have the prayer vigil, the church will be open if people want to come in and have their own moment and of course the coffee morning which I've discussed and the book sign. Um, Jubilee weekend is fast approaching which is Sunday the 5th of June, as if you didn't know. There will be a tree planting ceremony after the service, followed by a faith lunch, uh, where people can bring items for the meal. And would you see Jennifer Adams and Leslie Jones, who are coordinating this meal, and have a chat with them about what you want to bring and what they can advise. But again, all welcome. Um, we will also be doing some activities for the Jubilee Big Lunch. And this will be, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be great fun for young and old, and you'll be making craft things. You might even be making a crown, I've been told. So please join in. Um, I think I'm just checking, that's all. There is a birthday. It's actually Charlotte Edgar's birthday on Tuesday, isn't it, Alison? So if you'd send our love and birthday wishes from the church, which is Barbara Pritchard's granddaughter and obviously Alison's niece. Um, I think Phil would like to come and have a word. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, before I talk about what I've really come up for, can I just say there is over 50s this coming Thursday at 2 o'clock. Okay. Um, it's not very often that I'm lost for words. Uh, but I was last night, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the story goes back a, 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 a little bit. I was given this letter last night, and on reading it, I was lost for words. Um, a few months ago now, um, the United Church in Hells Owen closed. And uh, a, a sad occasion, it, it's a great shame when churches uh, close. Um, but I have to say, this church, Carter's Lane, has, in a way, benefited enormously from the fact that the United Church has had to close. Uh, and we've benefited in several ways. There are at least 11 of them with us here this morning. Quite a number of the fellowship from down at the United Church have started worship, worshipping with us. And that's been a great thrill for us and it's been a pleasure to welcome them to our fellowship. Uh, I was warned that there might be some financial uh, gain uh, coming our way, but I wasn't ready to anticipate what I was given last night. And um, as a result of the closure, the finances from the church 
um, had to go back to uh, the United Church Synod and, and, and so on. But it has been deemed okay for, the, for some of the finances to be allocated to some of the local churches. And we are benefiting to the tune of £9,500 from the United Church. And I just want to say a massive thank you to uh, Simon and to the others in, in, in the church. I will be formally responding, Simon, so that you can uh, go back to the Synod. But um, it is a wonderful thing. And this money uh, will be used for the furtherance of God's kingdom. It will be used here for the furtherance of our important mission. But I want to say a massive thank you to our friends from the United Church for this gift. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all ye angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost. Stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Wendy. This next item is a bonus and Becky is going to help us with it. It's an extraordinary story, and it's a difficult story to tell, so thank you, Becky. I've got a script as well, so if I have to help out, I'll help out. Morning. Um, so just some of you might know what I do, some of you might won't. Um, so I'm a manager of a nursery, um, in Harborn, so the nursery, we have four nurseries in the company, um, Harborn, Edgebaston, Erdington and Pipe Hayes. Um, children can join us any time of the year, um, funded children, so that's children who have 15 hours funded and 30 hours funded can only join us at term times, um, but Ukrainian families and emergency funded children can now join us at any time of the year, so they don't have to wait for that term so that we can accept them whenever they come. So at the um, Edgebaston nursery a couple of weeks ago, um, we had our first Ukrainian family come to have a look around the nursery. Um, the director, Lindsay, she um, led the show round and um, this, is, this is the story and, and how it went. Um, I've been conducting show rounds to new families for the past 12 years at my nurseries the nest nursery, but before, but never before has one made me so upset and touched my heart so deeply. So we had our first Ukrainian family come to look around nursery to potentially start with us. They had literally only arrived the day before. Well, neither mum nor her little boy could speak English. Mum could understand a little, so the host family, who was also Ukrainian, was able to interpret and we were able to get by, but we did so much of it using our eye gestures and facial gestures to each other. Whilst the little boy was happy to go and investigate and be curious around our nursery, 
the mum, I kept looking deeply into her eyes and there was such a sadness, such a look of overwhelmness and just being lost. Where am I? What has happened to my life? I kept putting myself in her shoes. To have been suddenly arrived in a country that's unfamiliar to you. You have no idea where you are. You've come from a city that had a port, had a sea to arrive then into a city, in the city Birmingham. It must have been the hardest shock to her system and you could see the sense of overwhelmness. She looked exhausted and empty. The host family explained to me how she had ran with her little boy on her back with their suitcase after fleeing from their basement. At that point, I could not hold my tears in. I am absolutely certain she has gratitude that she is safe and her child is safe, but sadly she left her husband behind and as we know, men are not allowed to leave Ukraine. So will she ever see her husband again? Will they ever be a family again? The uncertainty of her whole life, the look in that lady's face will be something that will stay with me for many, many years. As it, as it was time to leave, the little boy was holding onto a red car. His mother took it off him to leave at nursery but I gave it back to him to keep. I absolutely hope that little red car can give that small boy a little bit of joy, escapism into his own imagination, to forget for a moment the trauma he has experienced. We all said goodbye to each other and I hugged this lady before me in the hope that she could feel my compassion. I couldn't say it in words the sadness and admiration I had for her, but I hope she understood. I closed the door and said goodbye. The tears came even more. My heart hurt for this lady, her boy and every other Ukrainian family. It put so many things into perspective and I thank God for what I have and I pray for all those innocent people suffering. They're not just things in the news, they're real people. And that experience, thank you so much for sharing it, Becky, is something that is so moving to hear. And let's hope that if they settle, you'll be able to do as much as you're able and maybe we can find different ways to continue to provide support. Our next hymn reminds us that it is the power of God that we need. I'm delighted that Gerlet, who is new to some of us, but Gerlet is from Hungary, so welcome to you. So do you want to take your place? Um, he's learnt this song for us. We had a discussion about it and he said well i'll sing it as long as you stand next to me to sing it as well this is a bad mistake <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to stay seated for the first two verses and then we'll stand for verse three of our next hymn be still for the presence of the lord <clears throat>
and a part of your work. We pray for all who desperately need to know your grace and love, and ask it in Jesus' name. The last few psalms in the book of Psalms are almost exclusively psalms of praise. Positive, and if I dare put it like this, extremely philosophical. The hymn with which we will end this service is How Great Thou Art. It's one of those fabulous hymns which convey a huge amount of genuine reasons for praising God. Now, I can't help wondering if Psalm 148 was part of the inspiration for it. Why? Because Psalm 148's references to the weather lie at the heart of the hymn, How Great Thou Art. If you don't know the story of the hymn, the author was looking across a lake when a huge storm developed. The sky darkened, the clouds banked up, and obscured the lake. There were blinding flashes of lightning, and the roar of thunder, you don't need to do it, was quite overwhelming. The rain lashed down dramatically. And then almost as quickly as the storm had blown up, the wind died down, the clouds parted. And in those strange, fresh moments after a storm, the hymn writer could hear a bird singing coming from the trees across the other side of the lake. This experience, both the fearful power of the weather and the delicate minutiae of the distant bird song, were the reasons that he could declare how great thou art and offer his praise. And in this psalm, we also have a writer who is inspired by even the bad weather, to see the power and majesty of God, even in the difficult moments of life, to find his presence. And he experiences this in two ways. Firstly, from beyond. Look, look, shouts the psalmist. See the moon, the stars, the sun, the highest heavens, the water which comes from the highest heavens. That's where the angels live. And they are praising God up there. <coughs> praising God because of his astonishing creative power. He's looking at the universe beyond our bit of it. A good philosophical point. The way the stars move around the heavens is their way for the psalmist of worshipping God, obeying the laws God created. As the psalmist writes, he has fixed their back. However, for some people, faith is so personal that it doesn't get very far. It doesn't get beyond their immediate concerns. Me and my family, me and my church, even me and my country. Maybe that's too often the modern view. Yet two and a half thousand years ago, the psalmist has a breathtaking appreciation of the vastness of the glory of God. And it's more than just personal. It includes absolutely everything. Years ago, when I was preparing for ministry, if you know this, David, do you know I'm a Yorkshire Baptist? I've got to come from somewhere. I was, came to the Baptist ministry from the Yorkshire Baptist Association, who, among other things, had their headquarters right opposite Headingley Cricket Ground. Very convenient. This senior Yorkshire Baptist minister said to me, nothing is of no interest to a preacher. When the psalmist points to the greatness of God, he calls us to take off our blinkers and be open to the possibilities of God. The possibilities which include you and me as being part of it. We are part of that creation. Go back right to the beginning of Psalms, to Psalm 8, when he says, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You set your glory in the heavens. And then he asks, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, sound familiar? 
What are humans that you're mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them? And then he realises, you have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. And in this extraordinary, huge universe, we have exalted parts to play. And so he reinforces this point by saying that the evidence from beyond is also available from within. Look, look, says the psalmist, all you people on earth marvel at the power of the creation. Sea monsters, well you may have meant whales, Perhaps he was thinking about Jonah's great fish. They certainly held people in awe. The force of nature seen in the power of the oceans, seen in the power of the weather. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind, all acting, as far as the psalmist was concerned, under God's command. And then he moves to the geography of the mountains and the hills and the trees, and then the natural history of the world, the wild animals, presumably often scary. The cattle, beneficial for human survival. Creeping things, oh, look out for those. And flying birds, which, well, we know Noah found useful. And then this mega sweep across the, the within, the world, goes on to include people. And he points out that it's people of every status. You think that levelling up is a recent concept? God was doing it first. People of every status, kings and princes and rulers, every age, young and old, men and women, are all clearly part of this plan too. And you see, when humans work well together, they achieve so much, bringing order as they gathered food for each other, built shelters which became communities, developed skills and learning, established commerce and trade, and made an improving and hopeful future possible for all. Those created by God have creativity within. The psalmist is trying to tell us that the world was made by God and the evidence of the world beyond and within should elicit praise from us. But what sort of praise? <coughs> you remember Cadbury's used to make milk tray chocolate? Why, all because. Can you carry on? The lady loves milk tray, you've shown your age by that. All because God is involved with his creation. The creation is not made for his own personal entertainment. Not for him to switch on a heavenly version of Gogglebox and laugh at human beings. Oh, sometimes I wonder. But made for him to be in a relationship with his creation. Rather like parents can see children, not simply to be entertained by them, not even simply to keep the species going, but to find fulfilment and completion. And this is where this psalm gets tricky. I suggested at the start of the service that this is quite philosophical. And it does seem that this psalm has more future hope than present reality. It's looking to a time when creation realises that it's part of the Creator, and we haven't got there yet. The self made man, it was said, of Victorian entrepreneurs ended up worshipping his own Creator. And there are too many still who worship their own creator themselves, rather than seeing their part of something so much bigger. Through time we've seen it in tyrants. Putin is in a long line, which includes Hitler and Mussolini in the last century, and Napoleon, Genghis Khan, Roman emperors, <laughs> Egyptian pharaohs. Oh yes, and maybe us as well. We're capable of making the same mistake. Missing out the bigger picture because we see our picture, focus on our ambitions, defend our expectations against borders, so more immediate and therefore in our minds more important. And this psalm for me is a call to be humble, 
before the vastness of creation. It's a call for me to be humble about who I am. For Christians, a call to imitate the humility of Jesus. We heard from Becky earlier on about a family who have, in part, escaped from Ukraine, although their story is not yet complete. But it gladdens my heart that there are people of genuine godly humility in this country and indeed in other countries who are looking beyond their own concerns to the bigger world to play their part, their exalted part, in the amazing creation of God. And that's why we're here. That's the work which has to be repeated by us as a church. Why are we here? To do God's mission. I saw a brilliant summary of mission on a poster from a church up in Northumberland. It said this simply, mission is finding out what God is doing and being part of it. All because God is involved in his creation. Singing an old song has been the sermon series that we've been looking at over the last three weeks. In all three of the psalms that we considered, 23, 30, 148, we have been saying that old songs are still relevant today. Let's keep on singing. Amen. This is the first communion service since our last church meeting when we voted in new deacons. So three, of, three new deacons came, a fourth deacon had completed a double term. Our rules to be a deacon have changed slightly, so that person is also a new deacon again. I would like to invite at the communion table all the deacons here, you'll need to bring your bread and wine with you by the way, for a prayer of rededication, and we as a church will stand with you when we come to that moment. So can I ask the deacons to come forward now, please? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're now to receive and welcome these friends whom God has called, and whose calling the church meeting has recognised, to serve as deacons in this fellowship. Thank you all for what you have done and what you will do. And I invite the church now, everybody here, to stand with you as we pray. Loving God, we wonder at the way you call women and men into partnership with you for the sake of your saving purposes for the world. You call us in Christ and empower us by your Spirit, so that your church may be built up and your gospel proclaimed and we thank you for Lynn, for Brian, and for Terry. We thank you for Phil, for Jennifer, and for both Elaine's. And we ask that you will bless them. We give you thanks for all you give to us through them, for their following of Jesus and their willingness by your grace to serve together. As we recommission them, for this ministry, we ask your blessing on them. Guide and equip them by your Spirit, that your church may grow in wisdom, love and unity, and that your name may be glorified. May they, through the humility of Jesus, discover themselves as channels of his love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sing together, Meekness and Majesty, number 58. And I'm going to shake hands with all of you joining us. <laughs>
And so we come to this table. Not because we must, but because we may. Not because we're strong, but because we are weak. Not because we have any claim on heaven's reward. But trust in God's mercy and righteousness to each one. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens that door, I will come in and eat with them and they with me. We know the tradition of this, that the Lord on the night that he was betrayed took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is for you. Lord God, we thank you that in Jesus Christ we find his acceptance. We discover when we accept our weakness, his forgiveness. We are truly sorry for those things that we have said and done, for those things that we have failed to say or do, and for those times when our thoughts have not been as yours. Forgive us, we pray. And by your Spirit, renew us. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And being taken the bread, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. We eat together. In the same manner also, after the supper, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new testament, the new covenant, the new deal, sealed with my blood. All of you drink of it. And for as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he come. Drink and be glad. continue in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we praise your name and we give thanks. We're grateful for lengthening days and spring sunshine, for flowers and nesting birds. The world seems so much greener and it's great to be able to get outside and enjoy it. We think of Lisa and Alex preparing for their wedding, and we know that whatever the weather, they will feel surrounded by your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the people of Ukraine. We remember those settling locally and the families who are housing them. Please be with them. We ask that you would support politicians of all nations as they seek to provide support without escalating the situation. We pray for the, all those who are displaced or separated from those they love. We ask for your blessing on those working for aid organisations. And we remember journalists and photographers who put themselves in harm's way so that the outside world gets to hear and see the truth of what's happening on the ground. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Today is the start of Christian Aid Week. We pray that it will be a success and that people in many countries will be helped. Forgive us when we take our own homes and food for granted. We remember those struggling with the cost of living in our own country. We thank you for the work of our food banks. Help us to work towards a time when they're no longer needed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. From our own prayer book this week, we're thinking of ongoing concern for Ukraine, those recovering from operations, those whose health is a great concern and for their families and friends, and for children and students who may have exams. We remember those known to us for whom we have particular concerns this week. In the silence, we bring them before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much, Alison. Let's stand to sing our final hymn, number 62, How Great Thou Art. <laughs>
to love and serve God. In the name of Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, everyone.